Lover, beware, you're in for a scare. You did not think it would be a good idea for Trump to visit your city, and yet former President Trump said he plans to do exactly that. It's ultimately going to be his choice to come to town. I've just, I've tried to highlight that under the current situation we're in and the spotlight that we've been put under, that it would be a strain to our city. I understand there's many different strains we have in our community, but uh, this, at this time, it, it will be difficult. Uh, should he choose to come here, it will be his choice. And of course, the city and the county and other agencies working with the Secret Service will respond in kind. Does your message to Trump don't come to Springfield? What would you say to him? I think I've been pretty clear prior to this interview that, that it will be a strain on our resources if he comes. It will be his choice if he comes. If he chose not to come at this time, it, it would be okay. And I've said that before, at this time, it, it would be difficult. The issues that we see in Springfield, um, I, I will go so far as to say that in the Victorian period, I don't know that you have a city in Ohio or really a city in the Midwest that is more open and more um, accepting of, of the African-American community living in harmony side by side by no, I, I don't wanna to try to fool anyone that this is a perfect place in that period. Um, it, in some ways, it's the best of the worst right? in, in terms of race relations. Uh, it's not uh, the way it might be today or the way we wish it to be today. Um, but it's still better than it is in a lot of other places. But then that changes rapidly uh, with the Great Migration and the influx of, of uh, Southern whites and Southern blacks uh, moving in, uh, really, again, looking for better opportunities. But that hatred follows. Um, and continues to get worse. And part of that, of course, uh, for those of you that are uh, students of American history, is uh, World War I and, and soldiers returning home and realizing they had better opportunities in France, um, even as, as foreigners, uh, than they did back on their own soil. Uh, so, so a really, again, tumultuous and rough period in Springfield history, but a key part of our identity. And next year will be the 100th anniversary of our last race riot. Uh, Springfield had three race riots, the restaurant, which opened a little over a year ago, is a sign of Springfield's growing Haitian population. They came here to escape the violence and anarchy in their home country. Most of them are legally authorized to live and work in the U.S. under a program expanded by the Biden administration. The love we put in the food, the love we show as people, we show a lot of love to other people, to other nations. The Haitian community has given new life to the community because there are active participant in the economy. It was a dead economy, and people were leaving Springfield. But then the numbers rose quickly. Officials estimate there are now anywhere between 12 and 15,000 Haitians in Springfield. They say the city's infrastructure and public services are overwhelmed. In August of 2023, a car driven by a Haitian migrant hit a school bus killing an 11-year-old boy. Whenever anybody raises a concern, it's uh, decried as a racist issue, and I don't see these as race issues. Losing homes, losing jobs, um, just costs going up so high that you can't afford uh, things you used to be able to afford. You know, maybe now you, know, you have to choose you know, whether you're gonna eat or whether you're gonna pay the electric bill. Our city government ignores our concerns and mocks us and insinuates that our concerns are rooted in some sort of misplaced racial antipathy towards Haitians. William says he's ambivalent about Trump's claims that Haitian migrants are stealing and eating pets. We've left Haiti with gang violence, and some of us walked because they went to Nicaragua and walked the entire way. And they don't know if one day the white supremacists are going to attack. They don't know if the locals are going to attack them. Since Donald Trump's comments, there have been dozens of bomb threats here in Springfield, forcing some schools to evacuate their students. The city has also canceled the annual Culture Fest. My vision for Springfield is that out of this bad thing, there's gonna be some good uh, of it, uh, like more solidarity, more understanding, more communication. This couple from Arkansas came here to send a message. We're supporting this community today, but next week it could be a different community targeted just for political gain and political division. 
Governor Mike DeWine has called the story simply not true. Local authorities say there's no evidence that Haitian immigrants in Springfield are eating cats and dogs. The governor called the claim, quote, a piece of garbage. But in the weeks since the debate, Springfield has had at least 33 bomb threats, including the city hall. Two hospitals went into lockdown. Today, DeWine visiting one of several schools that were evacuated. Have your kids come back to school. It's a, it's a great environment, great place. Tonight, Ohio's popular Republican governor traveling to the city of Springfield. A, crazy time, huh? a show of support for a community on edge. Today, Ohio's Republican governor defended Haitian immigrants, most of whom are in the country legally as key to Springfield's economic revival. We had one person uh, told me uh, I'm not even sure my business would be here, uh, but for the Haitians. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris says Trump's words have left a whole community in fear. It's a crying shame. We've got to say that you cannot be entrusted with standing behind the seal of the President of the United States of America, engaging in that hateful rhetoric that, as usual, is designed to divide us as a country. Governor DeWine says that many of those threats to Springfield are coming from overseas. When Trump was asked about those bomb, bomb threats, he didn't seem too concerned. Did you denounce the bomb threats in Springfield, Ohio? Uh, I don't know what happened uh, with the uh, bomb threats. I know that it's been taken over by uh, illegal migrants. I can't believe this guy is saying there are very fine bomb threats on both sides. You know, this <laughs> Donald tweeting, I hate Taylor Swift. That's dangerous. I mean, I would, I would rather buy one of those Hezbollah pages than tweet, I hate Taylor Swift. <laughs> I think, I think Trump needs to stick to racism. It's less divisive. She's a Marxist, communist, fascist, dermatologist. An Oregon man has pleaded guilty in the January 6th attack in 2021 on the nation's capital. 27-year-old Andy Stephen Olivia Lopez of Milwaukee agreed to a felony charge for assaulting officers. The Justice Department says he also climbed over barriers set up for the inauguration and sprayed bear spray into the faces of police. I had nothing to do with that other than they asked me to make a speech. I showed up for a speech. I said, I think it's gonna be big. I went to Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington, D.C., and the mayor put it back in writing, as you know. I said, you know, this is gonna be a very big rally or whatever you wanna call it. And again, it wasn't done by me, it was done by others. I said, I'd like to give you 10,000 National Guard or soldiers. They rejected me. Nancy Pelosi rejected me. It was just two weeks ago. Her daughter has a tape of her saying she is fully responsible for what happened. Vice they want to get rid of that tape. It would have never happened if Nancy Pelosi and the mayor of Washington did their jobs. nothing to do with that. Former President Trump announced on the campaign trail today he will not agree to a second presidential debate. Earlier today, Harris announced that she accepted an invitation from CNN to participate in another presidential debate here in Atlanta, October 23rd. The former president responding with this. She's done one debate. I've done two. 
It's too late to do another. I'd love to in many ways, but it's too late. Join me on the debate stage. Let's have another debate. There's more to talk about, and the voters of America deserve uh, to hear the conversations that I think we should be having on substance, on issues, on policies. What's your plan? What's my plan? And, um, and we should have another one before Election Day. So thank you all. Thank you. So I'm joined today by my, my wife, Fran, uh, Dr. Hill, of course, superintendent of the Springfield Schools, and Dr. Vanderhoff, uh, who is the head of uh, the Ohio Department of Health, as well as Mayor Rue. We went to Simon Kenton uh, Elementary School, uh, had the opportunity uh, first to meet with the, the troopers uh, who were assigned and who got there early this morning. These are classes uh, that have Hispanic students. These are also classes, certainly, uh, that have uh, Haitian students. And, uh, you know, they were doing doing well. T teachers... Uh... Today, Junior! <laughs> I know you, you made mention of the um, hoaxes being largely from out of the country. Uh, are there some, though, that have been yes. domestically sourced to talk about that? I yeah, mean, my, my, my understanding uh, is that some are domestic, some are foreign. Trump has previously tried to end uh, TPS for patients. Can you talk about what mass deportation might do to the economy of a town like Springfield? I can just tell you what the business people have told. And they all kind of told us the same story, that after the pandemic and things started moving forward, they simply did not have enough employees. Uh, they could not fill these slots. Uh, they started seeing that they could uh, have Haitians do that, and they started doing that, and they started employing them. One person uh, t told me, uh, I'm not even sure my business would be here, uh, but for the Haitians. And that is about 50% higher than that prior number, or a raw 16-point surge, one of the largest shifts in decades for any politician. Why is Harris rising in ways we have not seen in decades? When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Now today, we see Harris as the boss in the prime position. She's a dominant figure in the Democratic Party. She started this week by seizing control, challenging Trump to a debate that he's running from, making him respond to her and her perceived win at the last debate. 